Chemotherapy is a treatment that raises a lot of questions and concerns for people who are about to receive it. We hope that this video will help to answer many of those questions and minimize your concerns. Chemotherapy can cure some cancers. Chemotherapy can reduce the risk of recurrence of many cancers after surgery. And even if it can't cure the cancer, chemotherapy often can prolong life. Kind of when I was going through chemotherapy, I was able to, I was still able to go to work. I was still able to um, get out, exercise, walk around. Um, I was able to travel. I was able to, you know, visit people. Um, you don't want to get the impression at chemo that you're going to be alone all the time, sitting in a room by yourself. You're still going to have daily activities and you're still going to have your life to live while you're going through it. It's scary, but um, it's really not as tough as, I, as you expect it's going to be. The drugs they give you to help you get through it is just they, you just sail right through it. It's amazing how fast the time goes when you're, when you're going through it. It really does go fast. Types of cancer treatment. Chemotherapy can be used alone for cancer treatment, but is also given with other treatments, including surgery, radiation, biological therapy, and endocrine therapy. As cancer research advances, more and more options for treatment are available. Clinical research trials make this possible, and you may be eligible to take part in a research study. If you are interested in a research study, please let your oncologist know. Surgery. Surgery can be an option for some people with cancer. It can be performed before or after chemotherapy or other treatments. Radiation. Radiation is a cancer treatment that uses high-energy x-rays to kill cancer cells. It is given to a specific area of the body, usually with repeated treatments. Biological therapy. This is a treatment with substances that boost the body's own immune system to fight cancer. Endocrine therapy. These medications block the effect of hormones to control certain cancers. What is chemotherapy? Chemotherapy includes medications that destroy cancer cells by stopping them from growing or multiplying. Different chemotherapy drugs work on different cancers. Your oncologist will choose the chemotherapy best known to control or destroy your cancer. Unfortunately, chemo can affect healthy cells along with the cancer cells. Thus, side effects occur. This video will further explain these side effects and teach you how to best manage them. How is chemotherapy given? Most chemotherapy drugs are given through an IV, intravenously. Chemotherapy can also be given many other ways, including by mouth, as an injection or shot, and even on the skin. For IV chemotherapy, your chemo nurse may place an IV in your hand or arm, or you may have a longer-term IV access, such as a portacath or pick line. The chemotherapy runs through these IVs, and the infusion may take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours. Temporary IVs may be taken out at the end of the treatment. Chemotherapy can be given several different ways. For example, you may get chemo five days in a row every three weeks, or one day a week, or one day every three weeks. What about your other medications? Tell your healthcare team all of the medications that you take, including vitamins and supplements. Usually, you will keep taking your regular medications. But some of the herbal medications can conflict with chemotherapy, and you may be asked to stop or hold these medications around the chemo treatment. One of the big things, if I would have a side effect, um, my wife would always be telling me, you need to call the, call the clinic right away, call the doctors right away, call the nurses right away. You have to get, let them know. They need to know what your problems are to help you with them. And you're not going to always um, want, to, want to do that. 
but you, you have to realize that you're sick, you need to get taken care of, and you need to get the help that you need to get better. Side effects of chemotherapy. Possible side effects include decreased immune system, nausea and vomiting, fatigue, mouth sores, hair loss, dry skin and sun sensitivity, fertility effects, lack of appetite, diarrhea and constipation. Throughout this video you will hear us mention your healthcare team. This team includes your oncologist, your nurse practitioner or physician's assistant, your nurses, dietitians, and social workers. Your healthcare team will help you throughout your chemotherapy experience. We may consult with other specialties to help with your care. They told me just to, to listen to my body. And when I was ready to, to go to bed, go to bed. Don't force yourself. Um, take it easy, especially like when you're bathing. The simplest things in life will just wipe you out. Making the bed, I remember, was just such a hard job. I would be so winded and then going up and down the stairs and they just told me to listen and take care of myself and get plenty of rest, lay around, baby myself and that's basically what I did. Fatigue is the most common side effect of cancer treatment. Fatigue is a general feeling of tiredness, weariness, weakness, exhaustion or lack of energy, Ways to help manage fatigue. Rest. Give yourself permission to rest when you feel tired. Short naps during the day can be refreshing and help boost your energy level. Exercise. Mild exercise such as walking can be energizing. Remember not to overdo it. Try to keep a balance between activity and rest. Energy conservation. Spread your activities throughout the day. Do the activities that are most important when you have the most energy. Nutrition. Eat a well-balanced, nutritious diet, including foods high in protein. Relaxation. Do things that you enjoy and make you feel good. Listen to music, read a book, visit with friends. Try activities such as meditation, prayer, or yoga. Communication. Do not carry the burden of fatigue or any side effect alone. Talk with your family and your health care team about how you feel. I also had nausea, which is one of the most common side effects. And I lost my appetite. It was very hard to eat. I also noticed that when I eat, the best way to do it was actually to eat a little bit first, wait about five minutes, and then have eat more food. That tends to be, it, it, it makes your, kind of prepares your stomach almost to um, eat the full meal. And if you eat little portions of meals throughout the whole day, just a little bit, kind of snack on something the whole day, you'll notice that the nausea isn't quite as bad as it could be. This is probably the most feared side effect of chemotherapy. However, with the improvements in medications, most people experience only minimal, if any, nausea and vomiting. Nausea symptoms may start within a few hours of treatment and are generally limited to one to three days. Prevention and management. Most people will receive a preventative medication through an IV prior to chemotherapy. Then, oral medications designed to prevent nausea are generally taken on a scheduled basis after your treatment. Other medications may be prescribed to be taken as needed. These are to be used when you actually have nausea symptoms. There are a number of other ways patients can help to prevent or control symptoms of nausea and vomiting. Take prescribed medications as directed. Avoid large meals. Eat small, frequent meals every couple of hours. Eat bland foods, such as crackers, toast, soups, potatoes, bananas, puddings, eggs, cream of wheat, pancakes, and muffins. Avoid sweet, fatty, and fried foods. Eat foods at room temperature to avoid odors. If nausea occurs before rising from bed, 
Keep crackers near your bed to eat before getting up. During periods of intense nausea, practice deep breathing, distraction, or relaxation techniques. If you have repeated episodes of vomiting or persistent nausea not controlled by your anti-nausea medications, contact your healthcare team. Certain chemotherapy agents can cause both joint pain and muscle aches. Drugs used to stimulate your bone marrow function can also cause these pains. The discomfort usually lasts less than a week, but this varies. Some people notice mild pain and others have more intense pain. Prevention and management. Warm baths and hot or cold compresses. Relaxation exercises. Gentle stretching. Pain medications. Ask your doctor if you may take anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen. Prescription pain medications may be prescribed. Notify your health care team if you develop sudden onset of severe pain. You have persistent dull pain that lasts longer than a week. Or the pain medication you are taking does not relieve the pain. Peripheral neuropathy involves changes to the nerves. Symptoms include numbness, tingling, or burning of hands or feet. These symptoms usually develop gradually and tend to be mild. However, they can worsen with each dose of chemotherapy. Prevention and management. Extreme temperature changes can make symptoms worse. Wear warm clothing in winter and protect hands from extreme cold. Use lukewarm water when washing dishes or bathing. Notify your health care team when the symptom develops, when it interferes with normal activities, or if you have unrelieved pain. Chemotherapy affects blood cells, specifically the white cells, red cells, and platelets. The white blood cells are responsible for preventing infection. The neutrophil, which is a type of white blood cell, functions as the most important infection fighter. Red blood cells carry oxygen and help to give you energy. Platelets function to clot your blood. With a low white count, infection may develop and your body's response may be a fever. If you have a temperature over 100.5 degrees Fahrenheit or shaking chills, call your healthcare team right away. Other signs of an infection include cough, sore throat, redness or swelling or sores on the skin, burning with urination, shaking chills, sweating, loose stools or diarrhea. In order to help prevent infection, we suggest washing your hands frequently. This includes your family members and friends. Also, avoid close contact with people who have a cough or are obviously ill. If your red blood cells are low, you may experience severe fatigue or shortness of breath with little activity. You may also feel some dizziness, lightheadedness, or may look unusually pale. If these symptoms are limiting your usual activities, please call your health care team. Certain chemo drugs may affect your platelets. A low platelet count may put you at higher risk for bleeding. Signs of this include bruising easily, bleeding gums, frequent nosebleeds, or small red spots under the skin. If you have bleeding, for example a nosebleed, for over 30 minutes that won't stop, call your health care team. Some ways to prevent bleeding include using a soft bristled toothbrush and using caution with sharp objects. Discuss the use of over-the-counter medications with your provider. Some over-the-counter medications may cause your platelets to function inadequately, which may increase the risk of bleeding. Specifically, ask your health care team about the use of ibuprofen or aspirin if your platelets are low. As a result of a low blood count, your oncologist may choose to delay treatment, lower your next dose of chemo, or initiate a growth factor shot to stimulate your body to make more of its own cells.
There are also other options, including medications or transfusions that may be appropriate. I remember um, the chemo nurse told me when she gave me that first round of chemo that within the next treatment, which was three weeks later, I have, would have lost my hair. And it was like two or three days before I had the next treatment, it fell out. And it just fell out in gobs. So I immediately went down and had my head shaved. I thought it was the easiest way to approach it, and I went from there. Like right now, I have my hair back from chemotherapy, and it doesn't come in quite the same way right away. It'll come in a little thicker, a little more curlier, um, maybe, maybe even a little bit darker. Chemotherapy causes varying degrees of hair loss. Some chemotherapy agents will cause complete hair loss. Others cause thinning. And some have no hair loss. If hair loss is expected, it is important to meet with your hairstylist or wig specialist before you lose your hair. Wigs, scarves, turbans, or hats are all options depending on your personal preference. We can provide a list of hair and wig specialists in the area. Hair loss can be quite emotional, so talk with your hairstylist and your family and friends about how you are feeling. Chemotherapy causes skin changes, particularly dry skin, and sometimes rashes or acne. To prevent or treat dry skin, apply lotion after bathing. Drinking plenty of fluids also helps hydrate your skin. If you have hair loss, be sure to wash your head with a gentle soap or shampoo daily. This helps prevent rashes or bumps on your scalp. Because chemo causes skin sensitivity, avoid direct sun exposure or wear sunscreen, at least SPF 45, while in the sun. Tell your healthcare team if you have any skin rashes, acne, nail problems, or other changes in your skin. Constipation can occur as a result of chemotherapy treatment. If you notice that your bowel movements are becoming harder, smaller, more difficult to expel, or they are occurring less often than usual, you may be constipated. Prevention and Management There are many ways you can prevent constipation from becoming a serious problem. First, we recommend that you drink at least 10 8-ounce glasses of water, juice, or decaffeinated beverages every day. Secondly, you can increase the fiber in your diet by eating more whole grains, fruits, and vegetables. Also, we recommend developing a regular exercise routine. This may be as simple as walking 10 to 15 minutes a day as tolerated. If you notice symptoms of constipation, you may start with an over-the-counter stool softener. If this is not effective, laxatives or even prescription medication may be needed. Remember to drink plenty of fluids. Notify your health care team if you have not had a bowel movement for three or more days. Diarrhea can be caused by certain chemotherapy treatments. It can also be caused by radiation, other medications, stress, infections, or it can be a result of the cancer itself. If diarrhea is poorly controlled, it can cause dehydration. Some signs of dehydration include a dry mouth, weakness, and dark urine in small amounts. Prevention and Management First, eating habits. Avoid large meals. Eat small, frequent meals. Limit milk and avoid spicy, greasy foods. Eat low-fiber, bland foods. Brat diet during acute diarrhea. B. Bananas. R. Rice. A. Applesauce. T. Toast. Drink at least 8 to 10 glasses of liquids a day. Second, you may start over-the-counter Imodium on your own to control the diarrhea. Follow the instructions on the label. Third, treating skin problems from the diarrhea. If your rectal area is irritated, we suggest gentle cleansing and using products such as A&D ointment, ProShield, or protective skin barrier creams as recommended. Most importantly, 
Notify your healthcare team if you have three or more watery stools per day that is not controlled with medication. You can still find pleasure in sexual intimacy during cancer treatment. Sexual intercourse, along with hugging, holding, touching, and cuddling are very intimate ways of expressing support or relieving emotional stress. Chemotherapy can affect the sexual organs and hormones that are produced. If you are of childbearing age, it is recommended that you use an effective birth control method. Because of the possibility of chemotherapy being present in semen and vaginal secretions, using a condom is recommended to protect your partner. For women, as ovaries and hormones are affected, menstrual periods may become irregular or stop. Menopause symptoms may occur, such as hot flashes, vaginal dryness, or other symptoms. If these are bothersome, contact your health care team for further direction. Chemotherapy may affect fertility. If you are concerned about future childbearing, talk to your doctor about sperm banking or egg harvesting possibilities. Changes in the mouth are common when patients are receiving chemotherapy or radiation. Good oral care is important during cancer treatment. Occasionally, chemotherapy can cause mouth irritation and dryness of the lips. Prevention. Notify your dentist about starting chemotherapy treatment. If dental work is needed, discuss the timing with your health care team. Rinse your mouth with a salt and baking soda solution. Combine one quart or liter of water, one tablespoon of salt, and one tablespoon of baking soda. Rinse and gargle and spit. Try to do this four times per day, after meals and before bedtime. Look inside your mouth each day for sores or tender areas. Remove dentures when rinsing your mouth. Eat a well-balanced diet. Try softer foods like mashed potatoes, yogurt, eggs, milkshakes, macaroni, applesauce, or pudding. Avoid highly acidic or spicy foods. Protect your lips with balm or petroleum jelly. Management. If mouth sores develop, clean your mouth at least every four hours using the salt and soda rinses mentioned previously. Use a soft bristled toothbrush when brushing. Report pain or difficulty eating or drinking. Report white patches in your mouth or on your tongue. Report a fever greater than 100.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, Mouth sores are temporary. They will get better. There was a time when I had no, no appetite at all. And I drank um, Boost or Carnation Instant Drinks just to keep my nutrition up. Um, that's what the nurses recommended, and so that's what I did. And that's why I lived on for a while. While going through chemotherapy, it is important to maintain good nutritional status. This can be particularly challenging because chemotherapy can affect your desire or ability to eat. Radiation can also cause problems with eating. Try to eat small, frequent meals instead of three meals per day. Include high-calorie, high-protein foods. Keep snacks on hand so that they are easily accessible. We also recommend liquid nutritional supplements that are available. If you have continuing problems with eating, lack of appetite, or weight loss, ask to speak with a registered dietitian. Many of our patients ask us if they can drink alcohol while they are undergoing chemotherapy treatments. We ask that you use good judgment in this area. Be aware that alcohol may interact with your medications and chemotherapy. However, an occasional drink may be tolerated. If you have further questions regarding this matter, please discuss them with your health care team. Self-care. Get adequate sleep. Listen to your body. If you need a nap, take it. Keep active. Walk for exercise. Social-emotional needs. 
Encourage the support of family and friends. Support groups. Many support groups are available and patients often find this helpful. Individual counseling may be necessary to help you cope during this stressful time in your life. Complementary medicine. This includes biofeedback and imagery, massage therapy, acupuncture, acupressure, yoga, physical exercise, meditation and prayer, and alternative medicine. What you want to really do is just listen to your body. Um, if you're tired, take a nap. If you're fatigued, sit down a while and maybe rest. Um, you know, just, just listen to what your body is kind of telling you to do. You do get through it. I, you find a way, a way, there's an inner strength that comes about that you don't realize you have that inner strength, but you do. It, it's, it's hard to explain about that inner strength, but there is, there is a deep one that's in within everyone.